this teacher said, all of you are moving way too much. You should know that this discomfort is coming from your own mind. Hello everybody, how are you all doing? It's Jason here and today I want to do something a little bit different. I want to share with you stretches that I've been using for my meditation practice over many years of sitting long retreats. Several of you have contacted me about these stretches. I believe I talked about them in a previous live stream. So I decided to make a video for you. The first thing I really want to point out though is I'm not a certified yoga teacher. So I'm not sure if these stretches are correct or not. I will give the names of some of these stretches so that you can look them up later. These are just how I use them. So please be careful, do your own research. If anything hurts or doesn't feel right, stop right away. Okay, so let's get into the first stretch. The first two stretches I want to share with you are two that I've been doing since my very first three-month retreat that I did in 1998, I believe. It really is helpful for sitting. Sometimes our knees may be a little too high that we're not able to get them on the ground. And that causes a lot of tension in your knees and pain and a lot of tension on your back. So for this stretch, uh, this is what I do. I'm not sure what this is called. I think it was someone might have called it an angle stretch. But you put your feet together like this, heels together. The reason why our knees sometimes are not able to reach the floor, first of all, if you're just beginning sitting, you're probably going to be very tight, especially in this area here. So to stretch that area out so we get more support during our sitting meditation, uh, put the feet together. Now what I've done is actually take my elbows and kind of push um, my legs down a little bit and you'll really feel that stretch. When I'm doing long retreats, I'm able to get my knees to the ground. But when I'm just uh, doing daily practice, I don't do much stretching during daily practice. I find if I'm doing a one day or three day retreat, I do a lot more stretching during then. So right now I'm a little bit tight. But it really doesn't matter. All you want to do is get a good stretch. So keep your back straight. You can push down with your elbows a little bit and you'll feel it. Another way I've seen this done is you can grab your feet with both hands. Keeping your back straight, lean forward while trying to push your knees to the ground. You'll really feel that stretch. You can keep this stretch again. You can do it for 45 seconds to a minute. I don't really time it myself. I just... Uh, kind of more intuitive about it. Sometimes I might go for a couple of minutes. But this is a very powerful stretch that will really help your sitting meditation. Here's the next stretch I'd like to share with you. Now, I'm sure this has a name. I'm not sure if I've seen this before as a yoga pose, but it's something I came up with because during longer retreats, again, like two, three days longer, I get a lot of tightness right back here. And I never found a way to really stretch this area. So what I found is keeping, uh, having my left leg crossed, I put my right foot over the knee, 
grab both hands and cup my knee. And the same time I'm pushing or pulling my knee towards my chest and bending down. And you'll really feel the stretch right there. Sometimes I'll wake up during a retreat in the morning and this area is super tight. It actually sometimes so tight it wakes me up in the morning. So again, keeping our back straight, I'm pulling my knee towards my chest and kind of leaning forward at the same time, really digging in deep. Then we'll switch legs. So this time we'll cross our right leg. Again, you can see my foot is towards the back here. Putting my left leg over, cupping my knee. Again, keeping my back straight. Pulling the knee in towards the chest and leaning a little bit forward. You can really feel it right now. This is another one I'll do sometimes for a minute, maybe a couple minutes to really get that deep stretch. Again, these two stretches really have been my go-to helping support my lower body for a sitting meditation during long retreats. The next three stretches I learned at the Providence Zen Center. So I sat one week at the Providence Zen Center earlier this year, and after the first evening sitting, we had a yoga session. And it was usually led by somebody who has experience with yoga. So again, I'm not a yoga teacher. So for these three stretches, um, I'm not sure if they're 100% correct. I will give the names to these stretches. So if you want to, you can look them up later. Okay, the next stretch will be a seated spinal stretch. I think this is going to feel pretty good. So let's see. Let's start with the left leg straight. We'll bend our right leg and put our foot on the outside of our knee, against the knee. Your left arm can go straight behind you. Keep it straight. Keep everything straight. And then our right elbow will go against the knee here. We want to keep our back straight and then just look behind you and stretch enough where you're pushing a little bit, but it's not too uncomfortable. You'll really feel the stretch in the middle of the back. I'm feeling it right now on my right hand side in the middle of the back, keeping everything straight. And you can put pressure with your elbow against your knee to get back a little bit further. Okay, so let's do the other side. Uh, this time we'll keep our right leg straight, bend our left leg, put our foot against the knee. This time we're keeping our right arm straight behind us. Take your left elbow, put it against your knee, keep your back straight, and twist. I usually do that stretch for about 45 seconds to a minute, whatever feels comfortable to you. This one is a lying down spinal stretch. So what we want to do here We'll start keeping with the left leg straight. We'll bend our right leg, putting our foot against the knee. And we're going to take our right arm and stretch it out. We're going to take our left hand and put it on our knee. And we want to pull our knee down Turn your head to the right. And just push your knee down till you feel the stretch. Again, don't force it. Also, try to keep both shoulders to the ground. You can turn your head more to the right to get a deeper stretch. And you're going to really feel this in the lower part of your back. Now, some people are able, especially if you're very flexible, their knee all the way to the ground. So if you're very flexible, you can go ahead and push the knee to the ground. 
I'm doing what's right for me at this moment because I can really feel that stretch. Okay, time for the next side. So now we'll keep our right leg straight, bending our left leg, move our foot over, foot against the knee. This time, left arm goes straight out. Grab your knee with your right hand. And as you're looking to the left, pull your knee down and feel that stretch. Again, you can do these for 45 seconds to a minute. If anything is hurting, obviously you want to stop right away. You can really feel this in the hip on this side and the lower back. And relax. Okay, this next stretch is the side body stretch. This one's pretty straightforward. So uh, you can sit cross-legged. We're going to take our right arm and the forearm will be on the ground here. Then take your left hand, keep it straight, and bend it over your head. I'm gonna keep my head straight. This is a little challenging for me because I have to pay attention to make sure everything is aligned. If you stick your hand out farther, you get a deeper stretch. Trying to keep my head straight, still. <laughs> and breathe. You can do this one also for 45 seconds to a minute. Let's do the other side. So left forearm on the ground, lifting up the right over our head. Everything aligned, head straight. Something I'm noticing too, if I bend my right arm, I don't feel the stretch as much. If I kind of keep it straight and arc it over, the stretch is a lot deeper. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, I hope those stretches were helpful. Now that we've covered the five stretches, I want to look at where is this discomfort coming from? There's two points that I want to talk about. First of all, if you're just beginning meditation, naturally there's going to be some discomfort. The more you do it, especially if you do it daily, I think the easier it gets. The first point is posture. Now, if you're just sitting 20 minutes or 30 minutes a day, you may not notice it. But I've learned from doing long retreats that even if I'm sitting like this, yeah, one sitting period, not a problem. But a few sitting periods later, I definitely start to feel it. So it's paying attention to our posture. Let's start at the top here. If you're feeling pain, the back of your neck, make sure you're keeping your head straight and your chin tucked in. So it's not like this, and obviously it's not like this. So keep your head straight and just tuck in your chin a little bit. This keeps your spine completely straight all the way to the top. The next thing to look at is your shoulders. So we want to keep our shoulders relaxed. Sometimes if we're tense, our shoulders are high. We don't want our shoulders out. Just keep them relaxed. Keep your elbows relaxed, so not too far out, not too tightly around your sides. Just nice and relaxed. And it's amazing too, even though maybe during the sitting meditation you notice something's off. So maybe you notice that you're leaning to the left and you straighten up. Five minutes later, you'll find yourself 
<laughs> leaning to the left again. The body sometimes has a habit as well. So a meditation, you really want to pay attention to everything that's happening. Another discomfort people feel is in the upper back. Sometimes if our back is bent a little bit, that puts pressure on it. So you want to keep your back straight, but you don't want to force it erect. You just want to push your chest out. That way your lower belly first can expand completely. And just pay attention to the alignment that you have. Pay attention to all of it. Chin tucked in, shoulders relaxed, elbows relaxed, chest pushed out so our back is straight. And you know it's straight again when your lower belly can fully expand when you breathe in. Another thing to talk about, which I mentioned earlier, is your knees. Very, very important that when you're doing sitting meditation, that your knees are on the ground. When you're starting meditation, you'll notice that a lot of people's knees are up during sitting. First of all, most people are tight right here, so that's why we did the stretch to open that up. But also, you can adjust your cushion so you can get that support. Because when your knees are up, again, it's gonna put a lot of pain in your knees, a lot of pressure on your back, and that's gonna hurt. It's probably the number one discomfort that people have during sitting meditation. So get your knees to the ground. So you have a solid tripod, three points, one, two, and three. If you're sitting on one cushion and you notice that your knees are not comfortably touching the ground, you can use another cushion. What you want to do is put one cushion here and you can put another cushion at an angle. What this will do is will help you bring your knees to the ground. It also gives a great support for your back. So you can sit with minimal discomfort. If you find that sitting cross-legged is a little difficult, you can do kneeling. So the way to do that is you stack two cushions together. If you're really tall, you may need three. I'm sitting on a mat. Many people probably won't, won't be using a mat, but if you're sitting your cushions on a mat, you want your toes hanging over the edge of the mat. And again, I have a solid tripod. That's giving me great support. Knees are getting support, the foundation here, and my back is getting support. If you're flexible or you've been sitting for a while, uh, one position I use is kind of half lotus. I take my right, put the foot over left, and you can see a couple things. First, I have the solid foundation, but also you'll notice that my top of my foot is on my thigh. So again, when you do these stretches, uh, that will help open it up. One thing you can do if you can't sit like this is just fold your legs. And if you notice that you're getting discomfort in your knees or your back, you can always switch. When I first started doing three-day retreats, that's how I was sitting. One sitting period, I would sit cross-legged. The next sitting period, I would kneel. Just find a way that supports your body the best. There's no correct way. Sometimes you may read that, but it's not true. You just want a position that supports your body. Now, if you can do full lotus, go ahead and do that, but don't force it. I knew somebody who forced himself to sit full lotus and they ended up damaging their knees. And even to this day, they can't walk very well. So don't force anything. Just do something that makes sense with your body, something that can support your sitting practice. The second point I want to talk about is your mind. We don't realize how much the mind causes discomfort for the body. <laughs> and again, I've been sitting long retreats for many, many years and I want to share a story that points this out. So my very first three-month retreat I did was in Korea, and it was very painful. 
I had a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort in my knees and in my back and in my shoulders. Luckily, in our tradition, in the quantum school of Zen, you can stand up. So if you're sitting and you're having discomfort or pain or falling asleep, you can bow quietly, stand up behind your mat with your hands like this and continue the meditation practice. And when you're ready, you can bow and sit back down. So during this retreat, especially in the beginning, actually through the whole retreat, <laughs> I was standing up and sitting down, standing up and sitting down, standing up and sitting down. Sometimes it would hurt to stand up. So then I would sit down. And then when that hurt, I got back up. When that hurt, I sat back down. There was a few of us who were sitting the first three-month retreat. So they were also standing up and getting down. Not only was it difficult sitting all day, the sitting periods were one hour long. Usually in our school, the sitting periods are 30 minutes, then walking meditation, then 30 minutes and walking meditation. These were one hour sittings. <laughs> so I was having a lot of struggle. There was someone at the retreat who was training as a teacher. They just became a Jito Popesanim and usually you have to train for six month sitting retreats and doing interviews with uh, other teachers. So the retreat leader happened to be sick one day. So this person who was training wanted to give a little speech to all of us who were getting up, going down, getting up, going down. So after lunch, during the announcements, this teacher said, all of you are moving way too much. You should know that this discomfort is coming from your own mind. <laughs> when I heard that, I was so upset, very pissed. How could he know what I'm going through? This is excruciating pain. He doesn't know what we're going through. Very upset. The interesting thing about this retreat is there was only 20 people sitting the whole three months. There was no coming and going. And every week there was a Dharma talk. And usually a student would give the opening talk and the teacher would answer questions. So everybody in the retreat had to give an opening talk. So it came to be my turn to give a talk somewhere in the middle of the retreat. And since I was new, usually people who are new to the practice will talk about how they got into practice and maybe how practice has helped their life. <laughs> so it was my turn to give a talk. Usually we recommend that the student gives a talk for about 15 minutes, no longer than 20. I gave my talk and it was about 45 minutes, very long. Then the teacher, when he answered questions, also talked for a very long time. In fact, I think he talked for about an hour, maybe longer. So the whole time, over two hours of sitting during this talk. After the talk, I noticed, huh, I didn't stand up even once. And even though I was in a little discomfort, it wasn't this excruciating pain. So that was very interesting. The next day, I realized that our mind creates tension in our body, especially if we're focusing on pain or sometimes we may be worrying about something in our mind, maybe thinking about something that upset us. It causes a lot of tension. So when you're doing the sitting meditation, just pay attention to all of it. If you notice discomfort, try not to attach to it. I remember having this back pain during the sitting and then kind of tensing up going, oh man, I hope this back pain goes away soon and just kind of tensing up more and the back pain got stronger and stronger. Just breathe into the pain. It's not about being a samurai. Zen's not a samurai style. So it's not about overcoming the pain. It's just breathe into it, relax. And what I've noticed is I will feel pain still to this day or discomfort, but it's not controlling me. And if it is, just bow and stand up. It's not a problem. Also, if you find your mind thinking about something that's upsetting or something that's creating tension in your body, just keep the practice. And what that means is just notice it when you're going into some kind of dream, 
into the past or maybe something you're worrying about into the future. Just notice it. Come back to what you see. Come back to what you hear. Just perceive the moment clearly. This really helps our body relax. Our mind and body are not separate. I know for teaching purposes, we talk about it being separate. But whatever you're doing in your mind affects your body. And also, whatever you're doing with your body affects your mind. The reason why that is, it's because it's just one thing. So if we can just be alert, pay attention to our posture, how we're keeping our body, how we're keeping our mind, not fixating on anything that's appearing, we notice that we can be comfortable during the sitting meditation. Be sure to be doing deep breaths. That really helps balance your energy, also helps relax your body. All of these are very important tips. I hope this video was helpful. You can let me know by liking this video or letting me know in the comments. If you have something to share, some stretches to share, or something that can help us with our mind, put them down in the comments. I would love to hear it. As always, I will see you very soon.